Hey friends, this is Catherine Barnes slash Queen Mab, slowly transitioning to using my real name. And today I am going to talk to you about some things I learned while recording the backing tracks for my recent Zoom musical, Thank You, It's True. Now, for me, recording is something that is straight from the seventh rung of hell. I get so anxious and so stressed out when it is time to record and all of the mean voices in my head, they get really loud and they start telling me that I suck and I don't practice enough and I used to be good, but I'm not really good anymore. And I'm gonna hear the ugly truth when I listen back to the recording. Those voices are vicious, okay? And for this particular project, I had six different tunes that I had to record in the space of a couple weeks. And this was happening at the same time that I was going back to work after winter break, okay? So it was very stressful, but I'm very proud to say that I got through it. And I wanna share with you a few things that I learned that helped me to make this recording process easier. So this probably isn't gonna be like super technical. This is probably more like hints from Heloise, but I hope that it's helpful to you, okay? So the very first thing that I learned, and I'm sure many of you already know this, but do not use Bluetooth headphones when you are recording. I found out the hard way that there's a little bit of a sound delay between the headphones and the computer. So I kept recording take after take after take, and I was thinking, God, my timing is so bad. I'm such a bad, terrible musician. Dude, it wasn't me. It was the freaking headphones. And I was so excited about them because they don't have a cord, right? Normally when I'm trying to record myself playing marimba or vibraphone, there's this annoying freaking headphone cord that's constantly in my way. And I was like, oh, with the Bluetooth headphones, this won't be a problem anymore. No, you gotta have the freaking cord. So anyway, no Bluetooth headphones, great. Okay, the next thing that I learned is that it's very important for me to make a musical score or sheet music, as some folks would say. So I started out with the very first tune that I recorded, I'm gonna show you here, and I just made kind of a general outline, which is what I usually do when I record. And I bet you this works great for a lot of people. And if you're someone who doesn't read music, which by the way, is very legitimate. And in some ways I wish I didn't read because I think I'd have a better ear, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, I started out just writing down chords like this. And that worked pretty well, but that whole recording session was anxiety fraught. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make an actual lead sheet. And a lead sheet is a melody and chords. And I included lyrics as well. So let me show you, I'm gonna try screen sharing here. Let's see if this works. So I use a music notation program called Note Flight and it's accessible online. And I'm gonna tell you that I actually hate it and I think it's really buggy. It's super buggy, especially when you start entering lyrics, but that's what I have for now. Another lesson learned, I need to get a better notation software. So anyway, you can see I've got my little lead in cues. I've got all my lyrics, I've got all my chords and each one of these breaks here represents a separate sound cue, okay? So this one, I'm just gonna scroll through so you can see, was such a headache to get all of these cues done. And I was so worried that I was being too detail oriented to include all of this information, especially when NoteFlight was glitching like crazy because NoteFlight really doesn't like lyrics. Um, but you know, I got it done and then it came time to work on another one. And I said, you know what? I'm not just gonna do chords and melody. I'm also gonna put some rehearsal letters in there. So it was probably completely unnecessary, honestly, to put one at the beginning like this, but I, I did it just for, I don't know, efficiency's sake, right? The less I have to think about. So now I'm going to show you how I turn those rehearsal letters into markers in my recording software or DAW which is Logic Pro. So let me go ahead and share the screen with you. Okay, so this is the same tune that I was just showing you in Note Flight. And you can see up here, I've got my rehearsal letters. And in order to put those in, I went to navigate and then I did create marker wherever I wanted to create a rehearsal letter, okay? 
So this brings us to point number three, my third lesson learned from this recording process. And that is when I would record, I would do one take and I would play all the way through. Even if I made a mistake, if I made a mistake, I would just get back on the horse and keep playing. It used to be that if I made a mistake, I would stop and I would go back to the beginning and do another take. And honestly, with the editing capabilities that Logic Pro has, it's really not necessary to do that. You know, I could get three different takes and I would limit myself to three. Okay. I'm a good enough musician that I can get three takes and create like a perfect Frankenstein take that combines the best of all three. Now, there were occasionally times where I would screw up in the same place every single time. And then I was really glad that I had those rehearsal letters because I would know exactly where to go to pick up and clean it up. And these over here were super useful when it came time to cut those smaller sound cues because I knew exactly where to do it. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And you know, the biggest thing that I learned from this was that I could trust my own instincts, that it was a good idea to make a score and it was a good idea to make it very detailed because having created those scores, it was like I had rehearsed it so many times in my own mind that when it came time to actually play it, I knew it like the back of my hand. And that was also great for my injury because it meant that I'd done so much mental practice that I didn't really have to do that much physical practice. So anyway, to wrap up the three things I learned, one, don't use Bluetooth headphones. Two, create a score or some kind of detailed map that will work for you. And three, when you record, play it all the way through, don't worry about where you messed up and get a bunch of different takes so that you can then edit it and create the perfect Franken take. And I guess for the bonus one is trust yourself that you know what's gonna work for you. I bet a lot of people are watching this and they're going, oh, hell no, I'm not gonna make a score like that. And if that's you, great. Um, but I hope that my process can be helpful for someone. And hey, if you've got something that you'd like to share that works really well for you, please leave a comment. Or if you have any questions about any of my processes that I've shared, I'm happy to answer them. Anyway, I'm Catherine Barnes. Don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. And if you want to see more of my content, you can visit queenmadmusic.com. Thanks so much. See you next time.